I'm Angie Marr, and I'm your steak expert. This one's really nice. Looks like butter. Ribeye is actually one of my favorite cuts of meat. This is one that I know intimately well. The best ribeyes come from ribs one through seven. It's kind of like the perfect cut on beef, just because it's tender, but it's still toothsome enough. It's got a deeper, more irony flavor, and that's what I really love. So if you look at steak A, you don't have a lot of intramuscular fat, so you've got a higher lean meat ratio, and there's less marbling throughout the eye. This steak also looks like it was cut towards the back of the animal, where there is less of a fat cap. One of the really important things when I'm selecting a ribeye is actually looking at the ribeye cap right here. This cut here, when you're looking for a really great quality steak, should have really high level of marbling, typically between 30 and 40 percent fat to lean meat ratio. If you actually look at B, you can see in here on the ribeye cap that it is almost 50%. So this is actually a really, really nice steak. This is, this is what I wanna see when I'm looking for really good quality meat. But you've got this beautiful marbling and intramuscular fat all throughout the ribeye cap, as well as the eye. So this leads me to believe that this one comes from a little further up towards the head of the animal. You can also see this one, it's got a really nice fat cap here. And you know, as we know, fat equals flavor. This is probably the steak that I would be going for. And you can actually tell by the differential in color between A and B, that this one is a little bit brighter red, but what I'm gonna say is prime. It's got that deeper garnet color, and this is what signifies to me that this is a prime steak. Prime USDA is actually the highest grade that you can get, and what it is is the fat to lean meat ratio, how much intramuscular fat that the animal has, and there are eight grades provided by the USDA. The first being prime, choice, select, standard, commercial, utility, cutter, and canner. But the three that are always used for retail and restaurant consumption are prime, choice, and select. Typically the other grades are used for burger meat, they're used for fast food chains, and then even lower down, honestly, dog food. The best part about a ribeye cut is actually after you finish the steak, getting to gnaw on the bone. There's a lot of really great connective tissue issue here, that's where the most flavor is. That's like the breakfast of champions, right? Right off the bat, I'm gonna say that this one clearly has a little bit less fat because you can actually see everything's been rendered out really with the marbling. This one still looks like it has a nice, healthy fat cap to it. I think I'm just gonna jump right in. Right off the bat, when we cut into the steak, we see that the muscle fibers look really, really grainy and it just doesn't, really look that juicy. When I cut into option B, you see that it is pink. You can see that it looks way juicier, way more moist, and you can actually see the fat distribution from the marbling in here. Let's just taste them both. So the thing is with this steak, when I'm eating it, it is dry and the fat's actually very chewy. A really nice prime steak should just be this kind of like melt in your mouth fat where you're not like, you know, feeling like you're just chewing on end. All right, so I'm gonna try the second steak now, but you know, it already looks juicier and you can see the fat in here. So let's give it a taste. Ribeye B is definitely more juicy, it is more flavorful, and it's way more tender than option A. So I'm gonna say that option B is prime and option A is choice because option B was just more juicy, the mouth feels just a little bit silkier, and the flavor is just a little bit more beefy. I'm gonna go with option B as being the more expensive steak. Let's see which one is which. So 13 and 54 a pound. You know, kind of expensive taste, right? <laughs> Definitely worth the cost. So in front of me, I have two strip steaks and one of them is clearly Kobe beef. This one, we can tell right off the bat that it's clearly Kobe just because of the high fat content, the marbling ratio, and then this one, option B, is Black Angus. That's what American beef is. It's always Black Angus. So the thing to know about Japanese beef is that all Kobe is Wagyu beef, but not all Wagyu beef is Kobe. 
Wagyu refers to any of the four Japanese breeds of beef, but Kobe beef specifically is very much like champagne, where sparkling wine that is champagne can only be grown in the Champagne region of France. It's exactly the same with Kobe beef. It's one of the most rare, most expensive cut beef in the world, and that's largely because there's only about 3,000 heads of cattle every single year that will actually qualify as Kobe beef. This is actually, to me, looks like an A5 Kobe, which is the highest level that you can get. So the Tajima cattle is actually fed grain fodder throughout its life, and you can actually see the marbling in here. It's a super, super light pink. It's got more of a fat ratio than a lean meat ratio on these cattle. I love the Black Angus, and this especially is a really beautiful strip steak. This is a bone-in strip, and it looks like it has definitely been finished on grain, because you can tell it's got really beautiful marbleization. I like to cut this a little bit thinner when I'm serving it for a group, just because it helps with the tenderization when you're actually eating it. The times when I look at Kobe beef, this is something that I really want to enjoy as a carpaccio or a tartare. This isn't something that you need to cook, but I think we should, we should sear it off anyway. So here we have our two strip steaks. I'm gonna start with the Kobe. So this steak, of course, really doesn't need to be cooked that much. It's got such a high fat content, but you can see it's just like all marbling and fat, which is definitely my jam. It looks like butter. It is super sweet, super fatty, and super, super rich. This steak is just so rich that I can only do a couple bites of it. But let's get into the Black Angus. So look, you can see in the Angus steak all of the marbling right here, the intramuscular fat. It's obviously not gonna be as much as a Kobe beef, but again, you know, this is a steak that I wanna sit down and, and really eat as a steak, versus this, it's kind of like a one or two bite thing. The Black Angus is definitely prime and it's definitely still a little bit on the sweeter side because this was actually finished on grain, but these are just two completely different products. I think both of them are extremely delicious. When we look at Kobe beef, once again, just because there's so few cattle that actually uh, you know, get qualified as Kobe beef and because they're exporting it to the States, this is obviously gonna be the more expensive steak. Let's see how much. All right, so the Kobe is 130, and the Black Angus is 66 a pound. So obviously the Kobe is definitely a splurge, but I think that if you have the opportunity to try it, just the sheer experience is an absolute must for me. And again, just because of the richness of this steak, a little bit goes a really long way. In front of me, I have two tomahawk ribeyes. Tomahawks are the exact same cut as a ribeye, and when you go and get a ribeye, it basically is the ribeye, the ribeye cap, the short plate, the short rib, and you have this entire layer of protective meat and fat that goes around the ribeye, and this is called the decal. And I think when a lot of people think of a tomahawk steak, they think of a ribeye that's attached to this really long handled bone. Personally, I think that's kind of a waste of everybody's money. What good is paying for the weight of a cleaned off bone if there's no meat attached to eat? This is probably one of the most flavorful cuts of beef and really the most diverse. One of these steaks is clearly aged, and let's start with just talking about the dry aging process. The dry aging process with beef is typically used only by restaurants and very high-end retailers. The process of dry aging is taking an entire primal cut of beef and putting it in a temperature and humidity controlled room for a certain amount of time. While the enzymes, the meat's natural enzymes, are breaking down the connective tissue and increasing tenderness, the muscle fibers actually start to shed water weight. Typically in the dry aging process you lose between 20 and 30 percent of the steak's original water weight. The molecular makeup of the beef really changes and that's going to result in a different flavor. One of the things that I love about dry aged beef is it's got a deeper richer flavor versus beef that hasn't been aged which has a lot of higher 
bitter notes and it's more sweet. But dry aged beef, it's just, it's funky. It almost has this like blue cheese quality to it, but in the best of ways. And you can even tell, like as I'm standing here, you know, and smelling it, you can tell that there's just that deeper, funkier, more blue cheese smell to this steak. So this steak I would actually say is probably about 100 to 120 days old. For me, that's kind of a sweet spot. I think, you know, for people that haven't had dry aged beef before, it's really good to start at a steak around 45 to 60 days, just because that's kind of like the entry level where you're going to really see the difference between a fresh piece of meat and something that has an increased flavor profile and increased tenderness. We are back with our two tomahawk steaks and I am just gonna cut right into them and we're gonna see how they look. Just even as I'm cutting this, you can just see how the knife just kind of goes through. It's super tender. And look at all the fat, look at the marbling. This one's really nice. Let's cut into the second one. This one's a little bit tougher. So you can already see, just right after cutting through, just the color. This one is probably gonna be the fresh, unaged steak because you've got all of this light pink color here. The fat looks a little bit tougher. It feels a little bit tougher. So you can actually just see the grains through the eye of the rib here, as opposed to this, which has way more marbling in the eye of the rib. This one smells a little bit sweeter and a little bit fresher, but we're gonna just jump in and taste it. It is so flavorful, so tender, super juicy, and it just has that really beautiful blue cheese taste to it. It's got that nice funk, but let's try this other one too. So this one's got a lot of like nice, high, sweet notes, but if I was really looking for a great quality, super funky steak, I'm gonna go with A. That's my answer. This is the aged one. It's definitely more expensive. All right, let's see what the reveal says. All right, $42 a pound and $35 a pound. Obviously, there is a bit of a price differential here. A dry aged steak is unparalleled. It's gonna be like nothing else, so I definitely opt for option A. I think that at the end of the day, from the low end to the high end of the spectrum, there is a steak for everyone.